going on, everybody? It is Tuesday, a day ahead of schedule as, uh, you know, we talked about on Twitter and stuff like that. But anyway, welcome to this week's episode of Recap. I'm your boy, Benjamin. And as always, if you're not able to catch us live, you can catch us on YouTube at hat-club. Be sure to subscribe to us, which, of course, is a fancy word for follow. And give us a like if you like what you're seeing. And, of course, we are doing the dual cast on Instagram as well. We've been doing it the last couple of weeks. So catch us here, catch us there. Catch us everywhere. Anyway, love to see you guys in the chat. He a Augie eight third in line. Shauna SFC, Ugly Man Chief, always present. Same with JM sixteen twenty. Cap Crusader, the antithesis to uh, our Tafuri Taylor, of course. Crow ten. Liam Minas, Peyton Spen, no hose Edgar. Uh, it's Lou. More beer, less work. BT Kevin R. Scotty with the sneaks. Wally absurd. Vizrod vibe. Kanda. Uh, Logan Herrera, I know, dude, I'm sorry. I really thought Texas A&M had it yesterday, but, uh, you know, the Vols definitely pulled it out. My apologies there. My name is Eric Elk Dot, Flash Fire, Lifted Truck 274. A lot of, lot of crowd today. I love this. And uh, Brother Bishop, there he is. Steve, Steve, Steph M40 and the rest of the crew. Uh, I'll give you guys shout outs and stuff as you start piling in. But anyway. Sorry to start start the show a little bit late. Uh, we were having technical difficulties on my end, of course, uh, because that always happens. But uh, Sub Diego six one nine just over. What's up, guys? Anyway, uh, got to bring in the ever uh, dapper, the ever dashing to Furry Taylor, of course, with us this week. What up? What's going on, chat? What's going on, everybody? Hey, Ben, how's it going, man? Good, man. How you doing? Man, can't complain, can't call it. It's another episode of recap. We're doing this on a Tuesday, but we are doing it on Tuesday. Clubs going you know? up on a Tuesday. Great things, great things happen on Tuesdays. So <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Having a good week so far? Uh it's been it's been interesting. Uh yesterday was my first day not being at the store in about two weeks. Uh, but I gotta mm -hmm. go back tomorrow. Hence why one of the reasons we're doing the show on a Tuesday. Uh the mm -hmm. other reason why is because tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh bit of chaos going on on TV. We got the NBA draft, presidential debates. Yeah. Uh, third season of the bear starting up. So, you know, want to get everybody this, this hat related information in a timely manner. So, you know, why not do the show a day early? No, 1000% Liam Minas, what's going on? Elk dot. I did see your post. Big shouts out to you. Rainy colors. You know what time it is. Two tone Tuesday. Of course. What's up? Peace. ITTV. Tef Tuesdays are now a thing according to third in line. Hey, I'm with that. Tef Tuesdays. Let's run it up. <laughs> um <laughs> shouts out to you guys man asher was good man it's, it's a good week good good time to be here on recap but you know it's not just a dynamic duo this week that's we have true i was gonna say let's make it an even better week we got austin yeah. in the house him he's been an absentee the last couple of weeks so good to have you back brother what's up brother so, what up, trio man? tuesday that's right trio i'm tuesday, strapping yeah. f tuesday <laughs> right, i'm gonna knock on wood right now my camera actually yeah then working. yeah hopefully it stays trio tuesday and no one cuts <laughs> yeah. out here no i think um windows is good my camera has now gone through all the extensive updates so shouts out to windows and microsoft man <laughs> <laughs> powering this cast today shouts out to you guys bro hell yeah i love it also, uh, Ben saying going up in the club on a Tuesday was not on my recap bingo <laughs> card. Was, hey, hey, it just popped in my head. So, you know, <laughs> I want to know what the over under was on that. It's like, who, if you <laughs> guessed that that was happening today, I I think you just need to play the numbers. Shouts right, out to you. Exactly. Oh, God. Hey, I occasionally say stupid shit. So, you know, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram Absolutely. live chat. What's going on, everybody over yeah. there? I'm I'm trying to go bounce back and forth between both, so don't think I'm yep. ignoring you. Yeah. What's up on Wine Sneak Life? Shouts out to the Hat Club family in LA out there. I see y'all as well, man. Gotta gotta make another trip back out there. Vizrod, I gotta point out uh, because yes, I there were points in time when we did the show on a Tuesday, and I would lead the show with that song until instagram started flagging us for copyrighted material so that's why i had to stop oh yep. wow fun fact of the day there we go. <laughs> no. they said there you go. can't profiteer off of mcconan ben no, base taco can't. said he thought i'd be wearing the yankees uh seinfeld hat when we uh started the stream i it, thought you were you're a diehard yankee fan come on mm -hmm. number one mm -hmm. <laughs> we yeah. knew better uh -huh. speaking of good hats though austin i feel like you're going to be taking us through site sleepers you oh, know, I am. Okay, I, let's do I it. Feel I, like it's, it. I feel like it's only right, you know, you're back. Yes, especially with uh, the technology issues that we've been having. Let me uh, 
<laughs> Let me pull this up here really quickly for everyone. All right. Mm -hmm. Sharing screen. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Liam Minas, you're debating which New York hat to go for. I feel like Austin has the perfect hat recommendation for mm -hmm. you. And it happens to Jerry be. Jerry would hat. highly recommend this hat. That is <laughs> true. But unless uh, you're unless you're a George Costanza guy like myself, then you got to be leaning toward the Yankees. So. <laughs> <laughs> or Elaine would tell you to go for the uh to go for the O's. That okay, so site sleepers. Yeah, uh, man. Do we want me to run it through it, or do you just want me to control the uh, screen here, Ben? There we go. Yeah, I was gonna say if you want to control the screen, um, I mean we're starting off with the. I say actually, let's start with these last because they're the ones that just dropped, yep. but also pertinent to uh, who our special guest is this week. So. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely, indeed. Uh, I will say let's start with that San Francisco that dropped this morning. That's right there. Um. Mm -hmm. You could technically say this is a 2.0, if not a 3.0 version of a hat that we previously dropped, in which case part of the Ox Pack. Uh, mm -hmm. These are readily available at the Great Mall location, but also on the interwebs right here. So lovely color scheme, black crown, a uh, little bit lighter than forest green for the upper visor, but a nice yep. orange, as in citrusy orange, San Francisco script right there. 2012 World Series Champions patch on the side. Uh, if you know, you know, very, mm -hmm. very healthy, organic hat chat. Very, if I were you, very I would. makes you want to take a drive. If you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> also, uh, I, we don't use that, uh, side patch often. So I no, no we we've literally only use it for two hats ever prior to this one. So, um, this, this is why variety packs and why you guys got to be on, you know, keep your head on a swivel. Yep. Uh, we didn't talk about the variety packs this last week as far as what was upcoming, just because we had a lot of other mm -hmm. heat to talk about. Uh, but I really like this Toronto Blue Jays here. So nice chrome crown, uh, mm -hmm. brown with the upper visor, brown button, 30th anniversary, muscle bird, of course. And shout out to Frosty Prem and PBJ, Hat Club original pink under visor. Is that a uh, strong bird? Is that what color is that? Is that like, is that um, pewter or graphite? No, it is. Uh, I think it's legit brown. So Jay Brown. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. There we go. A little bit of metallic copper, metallic silver in there for the yeah. bat and the outline of the T. I like that. <laughs> you like that. I like that. Good a looking lot. crown. Good looking crown. I believe LA got access to this first. Yes, yeah. they did. Chief was saying that this um that those flew in store. <laughs> I'm not up. surprised by that. Pick it up mm -hmm. online. Yep, yep. Ooh. On the interwebs. So this one uh, goes out to last week. Of course, we had a uh, Osprey Hat Club combination with the uh, Houston Astros that dropped last week. And of course, mm -hmm. our uh, special guest uh, from Taqueria de Sol, who, who joined us, very lovely fellow. Uh, this mm -hmm. is another version of a different hat, of course, from Osprey. Uh, Houston Astro script. So really like that tequila sunrise bar coloring that's going on the interior for the script there. Uh, and the side patch for the uh, was it the uh, Space City Cowboys? Uh, yep. No, Sugarland, Sugarland, Sugarland Space. Sugarland, Sorry, yeah. thank you. Sugarland Space Cowboys. I knew I was screwing that up in some capacity. I like that Fuji, or excuse me, that Lost Fuji Detroit right there next to the Mariners. We can go through this one though, but that that Detroit definitely caught my eye. Oh yeah, uh, good little Seattle Mariners right here. Of course, uh, current S with the compass logo on the interior. Nice little metallic gold there. Uh, mm -hmm. Forest green crown, black upper visor, black button, black sweatband, hack club tag on the inside with a gray under visor. This mm -hmm. is a bit of a wink wink as well. Yeah. If you know, you know. And yes, the Detroit Tigers, uh, definitely Fuji colorway in some aspects, mm -hmm. though, because the gr uh, dark gray crown, uh, Tiger Stadium. So Michigan Turnbull as far as the uh, side patch. Uh, alternate logo from the early 2000s. So the D with the tiger jumping through it. And of course, Hack Club original pink undervisor. Yep. Also feels like uh, we should call this like the Baton Rouge F Fuji. Mm, yeah, I could see that. You know, shouts out to those tigers. I, I can get behind that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So where are we at here? Oh, Kansas City. Been a while since we've dropped a Kansas City Royals hat, so uh, mm -hmm. especially a script version of it. So a uh, little bit of red and yellow gold as far as the mm -hmm. uh, interior and the outline for the script. Black crown, uh, black upper visor, and black button, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, which is the side patch on this one? Because this is actually the first time I've seen this hat. I think it's the raised royal side Ah, patch. yes, the raised royal. This is really low-key kind of – that side patch is giving me like a 
like almost poker chip vibes, mm. like like mm. low key, like because of like the concentric circles with the um crown in the center. But that's a really nice hat, though. I do like that. Photographed side well. I feel like that's a combination of a lot of things going on in Kansas City in that hat, so kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like this was probably I feel like this was probably designed in February. Mm. Sorry, my my I glitched out there for a second. So, anyway. <laughs> uh, contrast stitch Atlanta Braves just came in. Uh, mm. We've been dropping a few of these here and there. So we had an Oakland A, San Francisco Giants, which I know sold out not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, and of course, the New York Mets, New York Yankees, LA Dodgers. So, yep, right in uh, to Furry's wheelhouse if you're into mm -hmm. contrast stitching. Yeah, what I mean, would you pair these with Taff? Um, to be honest, I probably would go Midnight. The so the Japan Midnight Navies. I think for this would be a good um shoe to go with. I mean, you also have the taking it back the Air Max ninety, the all blue, um Independence Day came out with that pack as well. Mm. Um. So you could put that with it. Like, that's definitely sleeper 4th of July hat right there. Definitely a sleeper 4th of July hat. Good gray. Good I was going to say, gray. I got a bunch of Team USA jerseys I can rock perfectly with that <laughs> yeah. hat. Are they, are the, is that hat navy or is it black? It looks uh, navy, navy blue. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. So, Liam Minas, if it's, if it was black, then I agree with you. Definitely Travis Scott Phantoms, but yeah. I uh -huh. like the color scheme on this Brewer's hat. So nice little olive green, uh, navy mm -hmm. blue upper visor, navy blue button, uh, county stadium side patch for this one. So still a combination of just, you know, fashion in regards to the olive green and navy blue, but also team colorway for the side patch and the front logo for the 1945, sorry, 1994 through 1996 Milwaukee Brewers logo on the front. I do like that metallic gold in the front, like you said, against that oh, olive. Yeah. And I think I'm with Chief on this one. I think this is definitely hat of the day. The A's one? I do. I, I think so, wow. I've seen this hat in person, and it is actually glorious uh, because this hat is also readily available at Great Mall. It dropped at the same time the San Francisco Giants script this morning. Mm -hmm. Talic gold script on the front there with that forest green crown, black button, black upper visor, and, of course, the uh, All Metallics 1989 World Series side patch. Yeah. Chief knew how to pick the day. Wasn't yeah, I think how did the day, man? You got because I mean, even if you look, because I love the pinky version right here. Oh yeah, um, okay. I say I like that, but I think just that all metallic gold against that green is just, and it's a two tone with black. That's that's crazy shenanigans. And for yeah. you guys who are looking for the Tampa Bay Rays City Connect hat, they are in stock now. They um, most certainly are. Holy most certainly are. <laughs> I had a few people asking in regard to the Toronto Blue Jays one, if we're going to be getting that one. And I was assured by John, our designer slash buyer, that we are going to be getting those as well. So okay, occasionally they come in a little bit later than uh, when MLB drops them. So uh, don't worry. They they are coming. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, chat. I do like the detail of the sweatband. And I do like the fact that the new era is not tonal. The UV being the texture of, I guess, the texture of like the skin Bubbles. of manta ray i, I was oh, i thought it was like underwater ray. bubbles or or devil ray excuse me i don't know but i feel like my immediately when i saw that uv <laughs> i thought of when i went to the georgia aquarium and saw the, the, the rays swimming around the pool the sweat pant or the, <laughs> the sweat pants the uh sweat band is giving me uh you know the the swim trunks that you have to pick up last minute at target or walmart before wow. you go on your trip to florida oh, vibes I, I thought you were going to say light brights awesome <laughs> that too, that too. so <laughs> in the chat sub diego 619 was the first to point this out the the undervisor is actually supposed to be grip tape of a skateboard oh oh because yeah okay. there is the there is the whole i thought it was asphalt which also would make sense but it's supposed to be like to to go and coincide with the entire uh skateboard uh i thought it was ocean bubbles so we're all over <laughs> you yeah, are we, wrong. see austin you and i were like nautical themed yeah we just come here and it's like nope not wrong incorrect no nope. yeah i would legit was wondering if like, the front band was supposed to be based off of like swim trunks or something Thank i mean you, I, I dig it regardless i think the originality that went through with the city connect and i talked about this on bench warmers a couple me and chief ago. are right here i bro. love it me, me and Chief are right here. He said, looks like Stingray skin. That's exactly what I said when right? I Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, of course, the uh, color story that we dropped on Monday, so the black and graphite. No surprise the Montreal Expos was the first one to sell out. But uh, all stores got these as well. So if you want to pick it up in hand, you can. Uh, other than that, all readily available. And, of course, uh, for all you soccer fans, 
down there, of course, was the Club America hats. We dropped the Chivas. Of course, the two of them are the biggest rivalries in the Mexican League. Uh, so feel free to hate one another as, as you please uh, this soccer season. And uh, going back up to the top, of course, we've got the Calle Ocho, which dropped this morning. Uh, Arizona Diamondbacks, no surprise. That was the first to sell out. Wah, wah, wah. Um, I know. I'm actually surprised the Philadelphia Phillies is hanging on as long as it is, especially with the connection to the video game pack. All it, regards and, to the colors. Yep. And it's the three eighth left. That's that's mm -hmm. cool. It's the beauty it's of a cool. crown. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nobody likes it. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> oh, Wilder Pittens needs the Toluca in regard to the uh, Mexican League hats. We'll see what we can do with that one. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, speaking of Cali Ocho, uh, we got a special guest this week. Yes, we and do. Yeah. That's why I wanted to go backwards with this because I feel like it was a great introduction. So, uh, mm -hmm. one of the masterminds, of course, behind this collection. I don't know why I'm on the big screen, but let me change. <laughs> uh, he is Brett, aka not an influencer on the Instagram channel. What is up, brother? What's yeah, up, what's man? going on, fellas? How y'all doing? What's going on, dude? Hey, man. Yeah, Thanks for joining us. No, nah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. So I got to start this off with because you are a lifelong Florida Panthers fan. And last night was probably the quintessential oh, nice. moment mm -hmm. in Panthers history. Y'all get to hoist the Stanley Cup. How are you feeling today about that? It's surreal because I was saying to Ben before that I remember distinct memories of those rats initially getting stomped out in the, in the old Miami arena and then us getting swept. By the avalanche in the 90s and then we had that chance last season and we basically gave a gentleman's sweep so it feels like <laughs> feels pretty surreal you know usually mm -hmm. championships don't come far and far between but uh, other sports besides basketball in miami so it's nice mm -hmm. to see another the team finally bring it home um i know the marlins are poised for some type of relative relevance in the near future but you know we ain't gonna sure about that and same thing with the dolphins like <laughs> i can't even start start to start to talk about them <laughs> I, I feel, I feel like in regard right. to the marlins y'all really sold your souls in 97 and 2003 so it definitely blame might jeff loria blame <laughs> blame jeff loria he is i, he is I the always kryptonite. do he is the kryptonite to that franchise and you can thank joe robbie for that one <laughs> mm -mm -mm. i feel like the dolphins are going to be all right though i feel like they yeah. got uh Pretty stacked defense, good wide that, receivers. We, but. my uncle always finds a way. He has a very particular phrase for that. They always find a way to mess it up. So it's like I'm just, I can't define that any other way beyond like consistent mediocrity. So it's like <laughs> I have to just, I have to just set my expectations so low that they're at the bottom. So if any <laughs> any improvement that we get and we make it out the first round where we don't get knocked out by the Ravens in the playoffs, <laughs> then yeah, I'm all right. Right. Yeah. Well, they have yeah, the I, they have the I was just saying wrong. to my uh, my old man last night that I think that the Dolphins and the Jets are both going to be uh, uh, better than the Bills this year. Unfortunately, I think the Bills are going third in the a a uh, AFC East. Wow, I can see that after mm. them having Diggs leave, and you know, they're just they're, yeah. They're, I mean, but the Bills are always like they're that team that just is always kind of sticking around. They have their pinnacle of defense, and you know, they have yeah. that advantage. Lost a lot of defensive players this year. Too. Yeah, they did. Yep. Yeah, they did. They did. By yeah. the way, Ben, it's pronounced Kaye, not Kali. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I was <laughs> I was just trying to mentally like spell it out of my head. Is I I yes, I, I realized that double, and, double L's wide. Double L's wide, wide sound. Noise. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah, man. Kaye. So I mean, Brett, you know, you've been here before. You know, I think it's really cool to like just introduce you to the audience for those that haven't met you before. Like, mm -hmm. what was like the first hat that you can ever recall wearing? And you, this is not a paid sponsorship. So if it wasn't a hat club hat, we're not going to jump you. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> it was a okay. So I'm first fitted was bought from Lids because growing up in Miami, we don't have like conventional hat stores besides Lids, right? Mm -hmm. And then it was one of those i must have been like nine or ten it was a buy one get one half off from lids with those zephyr hats mm. and it was and it was uh north carolina tar heels and then i got a georgia tech hat because i was really into those teams at the time wow yes sir. I, yeah georgia fun tech. Fact, why georgia tech very pro hey, 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 I'll, I'll elaborate i have two <laughs> cousins who are from atlanta they both went to georgia tech i okay. really wanted to go there for college i applied got in didn't want to mm -hmm. end up going because there weren't enough women. Just being honest. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 
you know, that was, that was kind of my, the deterrent <laughs> for me. And then, but, but yeah, it, uh, it kind of went full circle. Like, yeah, those Zephyr hats, they were like, it, I don't know if they even make them anymore, but they're pre-curved. They have a fit, they're fitted. And then, you know, they had like that classic Tar Heel footprint on the front. And then you had the UNC logo on the back. Obviously, side okay. patches weren't a thing. And mm -hmm. then the uh, the Georgia Tech hat was a yellow jacket hat. It was like that burnt gold that they do with the Navy. And mm -hmm. they were both gray bottoms. I, I, yep. We weren't doing black nasties. Yeah. No, no, that no. Much. <laughs> so, no, it's yeah. all right. Ben and yeah. I have a, an extensive amount of black nasties still. Yes, we yeah. do. Yeah. For, those in, for those in chat who didn't know, I will not tolerate any Georgia Tech slander. That is my alma mater. Right. <laughs> like, but well, uh, all I'm saying, Tap, is that it was random. When I was at 47, uh, I called on Atlanta. Like that was one of, Georgia was one of my territories. I couldn't give away a Georgia Tech at. It was listen, all bulldogs. It was all. Bulldogs. I mean, yeah, it's it's funny. Like here, even in downtown Atlanta, and like the school is literally like right down Spring Street. You know, you go into a Walmart, Georgia right. Bulldogs here, and I'm just like out of yep. place we're nowhere near athens but it's all good yeah, <laughs> they don't get the, they don't get the love it's beautiful beautiful bookstore let me tell you beautiful it's a very nice <laughs> i've been to that bookstore i can yeah, affirm, got, I can affirm that it's a nice bookstore <laughs> you know that's you know for to brett's point if the only selling point as a college you have is your bookstore then you know <laughs> uphill climb uphill climb <laughs> yeah. but rambler wrecking proud go jackets but Jeff, i can attest to the fact that on the west coast Nobody was ride or die with the Bulldogs. Everybody was the Yellow Jackets, one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, really? it, yeah. yeah. It was. Man, they should open it you up either, you either love or hate the Cali. Bulldogs. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's obligation. But for others, you know, it's a choice. It's a lifestyle. Um, but <laughs> you know, I'm gonna leave it at that. Go ahead, Ben. No, it's okay. How many how many hats do you think you're up to now, Brett? Um. <laughs> Uh, you gotta like look over your shoulder. You gotta look inside. Probably four, five hundred. That is a solid amount. That's a that's a much higher amount than a lot of guests that we have on recap, which I mm -hmm. I, I applaud mm -hmm. sincerely. I mean, and you know, we're in this we're in this different different wave of of the community where like the 2020 era was just pushing such um, all like the pink bottom, the ICs, and just these different collections that were like cohesive collections all different same theme now we're just all in this creative space where it's like collaborator focused heavy on that so i'm like love seeing like people i know that i've been collecting like in kind with getting opportunities to be able to like make their own kind of designs and like bring something to life and that also still seeing like how we have so much more of this uh uvs going back to like grays and greens being a staple versus like truly color bottoms being yeah. a big wave mm-hmm but I have, I got, I got enough, I got enough in the tuck to can, to handle a different hat every day for at least a year and a half. I'm confident. <laughs> it's a good yep. spot to be in. <laughs> Very good spot to be in. Um, That'd be an interesting challenge to see if anybody repeats, like, to go a full year without repeating. I need to do one of those, um, those time lapse videos of me sitting and just changing a hat every single uh -huh. day and see if I could do mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that'd yeah. be that'd be that'd be a good one. Mm -hmm. So, got to ask you this, Brett. You know, are there any hats that you won't wear? Like, whether it's because of a certain team or it's a certain color. I mean, most of the Houston okay. guests we have on, they'll say things like, hey, if it's not Houston, we're not rocking it. But for you, is, is there any team or color that you won't rock? No like, team is really off limits these days. Mm -hmm. I'm a collector. I, I feel like collecting of hats, I appreciate a good crown for what it is. Um, before, mm -hmm. when I got back into collecting fitted, I was strictly a Dodgers and Marlins uh, person. So I, okay. I have like a, I have a bigger, like I always followed the Dodgers when I was growing up because like the Marlins didn't have a team to up until 93. So I was like six. And then I remember watching those games with my dad and then we got a team that I still had like a lot of support for like LA and watching them, you know, mm -hmm. not win anything for a long time. So it just, uh, I could relate <laughs> to that being like, you know, the Marlins were like the upstart, you know, winning in 97 and then again in 2003 and then we haven't won anything since. So now it's like the, the pendulum is shifting in the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> and then color wise, um, you don't really find me wearing often like a truly like a yellow crown. I have like mm. two or three, like three to four yellow hats and they're probably taxis. And then I yep. think like a pink lemonade here, but that mm -hmm. that's really about it. I just, 
I don't know. I, it's hard to, it's not that it's hard to wear them. It's just, I would, it's not, I don't gravitate toward that. And I, it's not yeah. the color, like me wearing it or anything. Same thing with like an all orange crown. As much as I like that color, it's like, I'm not going to necessarily be wearing that, ha- that type of hat often. Yeah, for sure. I know, I know you said it's not, it's not, diff, it's not difficult to wear, but in my opinion, it is like, th- those are just two, one, two bright of colors in a lot of cases, nothing wrong with it, but it's just like, Really putting an entire outfit around that color scheme is, is uh, a little more challenging. A bold statement by a Pacers fan. I know, yeah. no, I know, and that's the funny <laughs> part about it. It's just like I, but and then same with being an A's fan, being an Oregon Duck, mm-hmm. like it's yeah, but the A's yeah, got, the, they really got that evergreen. For you, it's a secondary color before it's a primary color in my right, eyes. Right, right, right. But yeah. you know, you got Oakland's got at least like you can rock a full green like Oakland hat, and you're you're with a hit of yellow. Big difference. Yeah, very wearable 100%. hat. percent. But trying to do the exact mm-hmm. opposite, it's a bit much right. on the eyes. Yeah, I think yeah. like Hack Club, Hack Club dropped like a two tone years ago. There was like a yellow crown with a green visor, and it was the green A logo with the 80, 89 Battle of the Bay patch. Yep. Like mm-hmm. that's a that's one of them ones. It's like it's a good hat, like good gray to have when it's the right fit. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Um, what in your opinion, and I know it, I know it, it's hard to, to choose this because you, but there, mm-hmm. there are some parents that have a favorite kid. What is your favorite <laughs> hat in your collection? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to two part this one just overall, okay. but then more, more importantly, what's your favorite hat that you've ever put together? Okay. So overall favorite hat in the collection. That's like trying to find, figure out the favorite movie I want to watch. Yeah. Right. Uh... It, it, the answer is always blood sport with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Oh man. Uh the money pit's a good one for me. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. If you know, you know. That one's old Tom Hanks 80s movie with Shelley Long. Yes, sir. Um, let's see. God. That's it's tough because it's like there's so much, there's so many different hats, and it depends on the mood. I will say one hat I wear often is the Seattle Mariners 1.0 crossover. Or uh, what is it called? Cool fashion. Now what we yeah. call it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, cool you're fashion, good. Fashion 30th anniversary patch with the evergreen undervisor. Mm-hmm. That was like that hat. I was like when I saw that, I was like that hat is like one of the ones for me. I have three of them. So that's dope. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's up there. Um, definitely a hat. And then you know, from from my perspective, hats that hats that I've had the opportunity to create. Um. You know, like the, and it's funny because it's kind of segues into this. That same Mariners hat was the reason I made the Lavender Fields Mariners combo with that big S and then 30th mm. patch, that hat, like that mm. style hat. It just kind of all came full circle mm-hmm. and I, I got inspired from that. And then oddly enough, the indigo used for the Nationals was the color that I chose for that crown set. For the other side of it so um and green's my favorite color but you know that's that's a secondary thing so yeah so yeah. probably up there the new stuff is different it has it hits a different kind of home for me because these are like really close to home mm-hmm. the the lavender fields hit um in the essence of i was really i was living in portland and it just kind of resonated with me in a lot of other ways so um this this i took a lot from like personal experience to really kind of frame and shape what i was you know, the inspiration behind everything that's dope, man. Yeah, Lavender Fields is still one of my personal favorites. Same. I have the uh, Mariners and the uh, Rangers from uh, mm-hmm. from that pack, so uh, still break them out pretty often. So, yeah, again, going back to what we said, wearable hats. Trying to make wearable yeah. hats for everybody. That it almost mean. looks like the UV almost looks gray at times, but if you see it from a different angle, which is kind of interesting mm-hmm. about that color. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like you said, you like in Florida, like kind of like in Georgia, Lids is kind of like cemented down here. But when did you first hear about Hat Club? And once you, you know, were introduced, what was the first hat that you could remember scooping up from? Okay. So, for so shout out to T Mark because T Mark, uh, mm-hmm. actually, I follow him and then he was tagging Hat Club in one of the, and like he had like a 96 Yankee on that was a pinky. And this, or was it a pinky? No, it was a gray bottom. And then, I saw, I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of dope. And I always wore fitted. So, mm-hmm. um, but they were just, you know, mixes of between what I could get my hands on, like just basic grays, like side patches was never my thing up until like 2019. Mm-hmm. And then the first hat I copped from hat club was a 
it's a uh, like the Merlot colored 1988 Dodgers. It was a green nice. bottom. Yeah, and then that kind of just I started going ham on on Dodgers hats again, and then um, it just kind of snowballed from there, and I haven't I haven't looked back. <laughs> <laughs> Because you brought up T Mark, I have to bring up uh, a darkness from my past. Um, I don't know if you like you guys. Know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? What? Oh, that took a turn. <laughs> All right, end the stream. End the stream. <laughs> He's frozen. Big <laughs> bros. <laughs> very extreme turn. No, no, no. Twenty. So before that, we had dropped the Montreal Expos and a New York Yankees nineteen ninety four World Series patch. We were the only people to right. to, to do that. I and have that Expos. Justin was the broker in this deal, but he convinced me to trade T Mark, my Yankees 94 World Series, for a Vin Baker Seattle Supersonics jersey. And I did it, and I've been regretting it ever since. Oh, yes. wow. Because you can't, they, they won't make that patch anymore, right? Correct. But the jersey I found multiple times over, and God damn it. Now I've got wow. a hole in my wall. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I have Maybe the Expos only. I can't find the Yankee and a half anywhere. That's yep. like a, piece of lore if you will yeah like had it, and it was a USA one at that i don't know what i gotta i'm not sure if it was a made in usa for me i think that was china but still mm -hmm. right. <laughs> that is 100 correct flash i will be thinking about this till the day i die yeah <laughs> Ben, you made me nervous there for a second. No, no, no. no come on. I'm that not took, as I say, it took a turn really fast. <laughs> yeah. Say, whenever you say I'm bringing up a darkness, it was. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm bringing up a game. darkness from my past. To go one of two ways. I, don't I have know. 12 bodies buried underneath the parking <laughs> space where my car currently is sitting. Ben so is secretly moonlighting is Gone Girl, too. Right. Yep. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, a lot of people have been haven't been as lucky as you are uh in regard to be able to link up with john and and be yeah. able to create something for hat club you've done it more than one time now I know. how did wow. that how did your guys's conversation first start and uh how are you one of the lucky ones that got to to work exclusively with john i will say that john is a friend first and foremost i, I like talk that. to him like i talk to him regularly about things out way beyond hats um, same goes very much about life um i had happened to be that same time frame of getting introduced to hat club as a store that i saw like he was getting he was tagging the the the, the account and then i was like oh this guy like he's like making the hats like and these are like the leaks and stuff i was like okay so i hit him a dm and i was just i was like hey love what you're doing this is awesome like you know would like just keep kind of pushing etc and then just kind of the conversation evolved from that and just you know here and there um where we were able to just kind of talk about things that like were not related to hats, but just I was kind of engaging with that. And then it just, it ended up evolving from that. And then we, um, at one point, I think I was, I think it was about a year into like talking to John consistently that I was like, Hey, I had this idea. I don't know if this is something that I could, we could approach, but I'd love to see if you'd be interested. And he just, he was like super gassed about it the way I described him. And then one thing led to another and we ended up started working on the mock-ups and going back and forth. And John really helped uh, put bring the vision to life and put it in you know people's people's hands. So that was that's really how it kind of kind of started. And then to have this next layer of this um, of me designing something, I had share with him like this whole concept, and he was like really excited because I like the idea of storytelling. I think it r resonates more with people and just making like a making a hat just to make a hat. Mm -hmm. Like I I want it to have purpose where it's not going to be just so. Um, no, like an afterthought there's real like impact to it there's something that kind of people can take something away from it and it's thoughtful and how it's executed yeah well said definitely man. Oh, thank pretty you. Dope. that's pretty <laughs> dope and uh to answer peace's question uh no peace john is not real <laughs> that has just been on the ai wagon well before the rest <laughs> of society and he's been with tight so, with AI for a few years now. I'll be honest, I am a I am a shareholder and backer in Chat GPT. So you know, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where we uh we've been just trying to keep it under the wraps for a long time, but the cat's out of the bag. So uh <laughs> there we go. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, man. So I mean, obviously you talked us through like the storytelling that you were doing behind Lavender Fields, you know, it was somewhere that you were living at the time. You know, but were you really expecting that collection to be like a massive hit, let alone like a re-release, you know, that we did again at the end of 2022? Like, 
put it this way, concisely put, did you think that the hat was going to be reach as far and be in as much demand as it was almost, you know, again, a couple of years after, you know, initial release? Mm, no, the short answer. <laughs> the, <laughs> the long ver answer of that is that I was insanely nervous, I guess, if you will, because it's like you're mm -hmm. putting a, a lot of yourself out there in a public eye and you don't mm -hmm. know how it's going to get received. Yeah. Um, and I just remember like a lot of getting a lot of support from people I knew in the community and just uh, seeing how the drop started and how it finished. And I was just like, wow, this actually like people really were messing with these. I was shocked because you never know how it's going to be received. And like that to me, it's like I was kind of taking a real leap of seeing what creatively could actually what I could do, because this is the first time I had the opportunity to do something where I could. I had a concept and it translated into something I was passionate about. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it's, it's amazing to be able to even be in an opportunity, uh, seat to do, have an opportunity to do that. Yeah. I mean, and chief said it, like said that the Seattle lavender fields is a top 30 hat clothes drop of all time. And I'm, I, I, I feel, really, I feel that way too. I'd agree with yeah, that. I, like I have it and like I'm incredibly humbled. I promise you. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, every time I look at it, I think it's just, you kind of pick up a new, like just appreciation for it. Ironically enough, I used your hat to win outfit grid. I think there like we go last year. Yeah. So like, yeah, that's right. I remember that. Yeah. Oh. So, I mean, and I didn't cop it when it first dropped, I actually like mm -hmm. got it, I think through like the, the highways and byways, but it definitely is a great hat and I appreciate it more details and things from a fit perspective you can do with it. Um, even to yeah. this day, I'm like, man, I actually wore it two days ago. I actually awesome. did wear it two days Lifted ago. trucks wearing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> I love to hear that. Yeah, yeah it does it, it plays a lot of versatility for people who actually can you can just throw it on and, and it, it's very wearable and that's that's a mindset and how you kind of anything i do mm -hmm. exactly so here we are two years later uh from that right from the, from the initial drop which is which is still kind of crazy to think of like how much time is a flat circle slash uh it's it's also amazing that you know over 700 days have passed in between this but Kaye Ocho drops mm -hmm. today. Did I fuck up the name again? No, it was better. No, you did it again. Better. Yeah. You got to you got to put you got to put like your chest into it like a little Kaye, you know, a little, little, little oomph to it. I admit, I was kind of hunched over cuz I mean, I'm I'm damn tall for this setup so. Uh then. But no, um how long how long were you were you thinking about this particular collection because you and I talked before the show where it's just like you get in your headspace about, you know, something, you know, looks good, but then it's just like the transition from in the head to paper to right. final product. And you're just nervous because you want it to be perfect, you know, on the initial drop, you want it to connect with everybody. And so how did, how did that two year time frame between Lavender Fields and today go for you? So Lavender Fields happens. I'm like, all right, like, I'm just going to kind of enjoy this for the moment and like really kind of not, be one of those i didn't want to be a person who was just like all right i made this now i got to keep like pushing out stuff and just kind of saturating the market with designs that made people not like again like not resonate with and then i had put a, a couple months past and i put a mood board together and that's kind of how like um i'm like a very visual person so yeah. i started thinking about you know what would be a good way to represent like where i'm from and you know because there really isn't that we don't have that presence of like a hat club in Miami. So it's like, how do you kind of resonate with the people? How do you give them an opportunity to kind of showcase parts of the city that you don't see from what you always see in like the movies or in television where it's like, it's always a pan to Miami beach and they do that, that flyover. And it's, it's just the same thing at nauseum. Like there's so much more to it. And mm -hmm. that's where it kind of started. And then I told John about it and I was just like, this is what I'm thinking. And I sent him the mood board and I'm like, we can kind of encapsulate this whole concept into something that's like, you have to really be like a local to see how this kind of resonates with you or how you're going to kind of take a part of it. Or even if you walk that street, it it's such a known street that cuts east and west as far as the ocean and as west as to the Everglades. And then um, it just kind of started from there and snowballed. And it's just a matter of like, when was the time right of being able to put them in people's hands? I honestly would love wanted it sooner, but I know to your point, time is something that is just like ebbs and flows. So we had to kind mm -hmm. of figure out when when it would be strategic enough to happen, have it happen again. And then we're here we are, you know, fast forward two years later, we're like, 
at this juncture and now they're i'm like looking at them it's crazy Mm -hmm. Well, I think another thing that can be said about that is, you know, you look back two years ago and how long it took to go from, you know, mocking it up to send the order in and how long it's going to take to actually hit the warehouse and hit the website. And I mean, we were talking like six plus months. So now that we've gotten everything back into a shorter time frame, it's like, I feel like, you know, the timing on this is perfect. Great summer hat collection, especially, Mm -hmm. you know, based on an area that is primarily in the sunshine if not yep. rainforest. Um, <laughs> well, I, I I think it was perfect. So yeah, kudos, kudos I to you guys that. on that. No, yeah, I mean, again, shouts to John for letting, uh, letting something like this even be a possibility for me again. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we try to try to make things that make sense for people and then that are fun. And then also just can be a different lens that has not been approached yet, you know? And I, I feel like we often yeah. see a lot of remixes of the same stuff. We're not getting mm-hmm. enough of, um, and it's not a knock on anyone. I just think that like there's that that's a formula that we've seen often of, and I, I like to see to continue to make stuff that's different. Yeah, this wasn't a question that we had prepared, but we're gonna kind of put you on the spot here, Brett. So sure. I mean, obviously, you had your you have your collection, your four hats that dropped today. What would you say is your favorite of what's what's of what's dropped? Um, it's probably a toss up between this one. Mm. <clears throat> it's a beauty. I don't know I something about that. that. The, it's just, and I, and like I said, like this hits home, but the patch just kind of really, I saw when this patch dropped and I was like, all right, I can, we can do something with this. Cause like, it's not, the, not to knock the, the franchise, but the patch choices are not the deepest compared <laughs> to like, agreed. Agreed. compared yeah. to like a Houston or, you know, um, like a St. Louis. And then, you know, you see like comparatively, like this is just d- very different execution. Mm-hmm. So either, Either the Marlins or the Versailles, like, yeah, I grew up eating at this restaurant. So it's, it's kind of crazy, like, to be able to see that and, like, have an opportunity to kind of showcase, like, my appreciation for that. It was, like, I have fond memories of my grandmother eating there, like, mm-hmm. you know, and just getting, um, getting, awesome. uh, getting a chance to kind of showcase that in a way. And then, and it, rightfully so, it ended up selling out, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's wild to see that happen. Um, mm-hmm. And, each of these hats hits in a different way. Um, mm-hmm. I was re- I took a leap with like the Phillies because I didn't know what that color was going to look like in hand, and it mm-hmm. ended up being like a super wearable crown. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I mean, again, like I thought it. You know, you don't know what you're gonna you know from that from like it's like you're paying doing paint by numbers without even seeing the numbers in front of you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it, it's it's kind of a challenge to be able to navigate that and be like, all right, this is going to make sense. Yeah, that Panama tan just hits different. I feel like that. That's going to be a hat that's going to age very well, very mm-hmm. wearable all season. Yeah. Um, I think people are going to like it. But yeah, the Versailles definitely is is my personal favorite. And then I would go F- Phillies. I was saying originally when we first like covered the collection, it was just like, ah, you know, Miami, you know, that really might be the sleeper. But the more I look at it, it's like, that's not a sleeper at all. It's just a really, really good crown. I th- really like, I think it's extremely wearable. Yeah. And we don't get a lot of Miami hats that, um, it's tough to it, it's tough to make a quality Marlins hat. I feel like it's one of the more challenging teams to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, back to that point of just you're limited in in uh, the patches available, and it's a very niche market of hats of uh, team mm-hmm. compared to like where you have like somewhere like you know you go back to the Astros, they have fandom everywhere or the Phillies even like there are people I, I wear a Phillies hat. People come up to me and, and I live in Austin right now. They're like. Oh, you're a Philly fan? I'm like, nah, I just collect hats. And they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And they, yeah, they, get, and really, I mean, they I, get really defeated about that. Like, <laughs> like, oh, I thought, and I feel I like Miami has not lent themselves to, to having great current day logos. Um, yeah. Where like they're, I mean, their old school logos are great, but the yep. new ones are very hit or miss. Mm. I, I'm going to throw it out there because I feel like this is just a, you know, as time where wears on kind of a thing the marlins logo that they introduced in the 2012 season they stopped using in 2018 i i think is still a great logo oh, i would giant, agree going with that futuristic you know kind of art deco look mm-hmm. i just feel like you know well there were there were a number of years where john really made up some great colorways to go with it and all those hats sold out i think it was just at the time the usage of the colors by the marlins is what kind of killed that really more than anything i feel like they could have gotten original with it 
that and the fact of the story on how the the stadium was built is the real mm. the the real root cause in my opinion of the problem because they tore down the orange bowl to right. build that stadium and because you know for those that don't know the marlins for the longest time played it where the dolphins play at which is now hard i think right. it's hard rock um mm-hmm. they change the name every year but that field used to convert into a baseball diamond and then they finally got the money to basically knock down the orange bowl and build that stadium and then they had that monstrosity of this like home run um fish like app- you know, that apparatus thing, thing. Oh, it, yeah. is, <laughs> it is it is so obnoxious and it's like <laughs> it's just really corny in my opinion <laughs> yeah. like you know i i will say though i was obviously excited when the team got this new stadium so i have my friends and i each went in on like uh one of those um commemorative of uh, stones that's like mm-hmm. a, uh, on the footpath so my name is there i'm like i contributed to this <laughs> but you know I'm, I'm at my own mercy of that and then to ben's point yeah that giant m was like very it was like it had a very like pow to it and i know that uh, i have some of those hats where it's a much more smaller logo and it's really tasteful yeah mm-hmm. when it's, it's like the hood ornament i can't I, we can't do that <laughs> i agree, I, agree I, with I that. mean to me it was like the swooping fish coming out of the side i wasn't super keen on like i think yeah if they were for sure as the m and that was it that would have been great Mm-hmm. I mean, this this is so much better than exactly. Had, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So many One years, million like, percent. And yeah. I, I really just think that like that's a good typeface font. You know, like they did a better job. It feels like on brand with the team and like the essence mm-hmm. of the city. You know, and then you got like now what's happening with like Inter Miami. It's like it's all kind of in tied to each other. So it'd be interesting to see like how that the team continues to get better hopefully and you know maybe we get some more we can get another world series in there yeah so Dom's less is more yeah for sure. <laughs> I, would, I mean i i wouldn't be shocked if like five ten five ten years down the road they go back to like the 93 logo though and like that oh, whole color scheme. i can see that 100 percent. So, because i yeah. mean it was, it's still one of the best logos like yeah yeah i mean it's got a classic it is a classic baseball logo yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I use I have a a Hanley Ramirez pinstripe jersey that has that chest the the chest like that, but the home sick. jersey. Sick. That's yeah. sick. And you know they don't wear the pinstripes at all. That was the one thing I liked about the teams that we always we were like one of those few teams that had a pinstripe uniform that wasn't the Yankees. Right. Hmm. Yep. So last question for you. Uh, sure. First and foremost, appreciate you being on with us. Love spending oh, thank you for, with you again. Thank you for having us. You and I go back a ways, and this is actually our second finally, you know, face-to-face conversation. At least the first time we had it was literally standing in front of one another. That's right. <laughs> um, anything you got cooking up that you can kind of like, you know, just slyly, you know, let let the people know about? We're going west. We are. Uh, we're going <laughs> west. Yeah, we're going west. Um, very, very uh, on point with what we were, what I was talking about before. Things are going to just kind of, re- you know, I, I use this word a lot today, but like resonate with people and it's going to be, it's going to be iconic in terms of like how it was approached. I think you will see when you see something coming out, that it's like, this makes a lot of sense. Mm. I think, I think the conversation we just had, like I'm talking like 30, 45 seconds ago sure. uh, was a great lead into that because of the fact that you had shared with me what, one of the concepts behind it and the fact that we just basically told the entire story of it, uh, or you did. (laughs) Right. Very fitting. Oh, yeah. You know, so we're, we're, we try to be very, very strategic in how we put these things together. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, you guys got any other questions you want to fire Brett? No, man. Uh, like you or or, no, Austin, you had one. No, I said no, uh, sir. No, I appreciate no, okay. you hopping on. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, Brett, like you said, extremely great, well put together pack, tactical, like a true KOC. You know, did, did what you <laughs> had to do. But no, man, I'm I'm super excited. I think people are going to receive these hats really well, and can't wait to see what else you're cooking up, especially this this Westbound collection. I feel like this is, I'm excited. I'm excited to see it yeah. come together. I think oh, yeah. uh, I think it's going to have a it's a different feel to it. Um, it's still very uh, like on brand, but at the same mm-hmm. time, it's got you're you're hitting different points of the city, and just different moments that make a lot of sense. So you know, mm-hmm. excited to see people style them. Hopefully, you know, and we uh, I know that they're going to enjoy what we have coming down the pipeline. 
I yeah, agree with that. Percent, man. Oh, and, and one other thing is, aside from that, that, uh, you know, things we talk about and just in terms of things that make sense for people and like, mm-hmm. we talk about like anniversaries and everything, just the, the number 75 is very important this year. So, you know, we'll, uh, I'll allude to that another time. Ben, I'll hit you. You you can hit me later on on that. I'll give you more context about that. No, I can't <laughs> wait. And then more importantly, I I am planning on going to Texas this year. Uh, more than likely San Antonio area, which is not going to be terribly far from where you're at. So I'll give you a heads up and try and make my way to come see you. Yeah, no, nah, we'll uh we can definitely get some grub, bro. I'll hook you up with some good uh, Texas barbecue. I got a great pl- I got plenty of options, and it's not Franklin. FYI. Thank God. I like I like I like hot smoked meat, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's just <laughs> I got nothing for that one. <laughs> Brett, we appreciate you hopping yeah, on. Bro. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate hey, it. everybody. Give him a follow on Instagram, not an influencer. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, yes, man. man. Have a good day, guys. Thanks again. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Chat's got you, man. That's how I, yeah, I operate, Chats man. Gotta throw out one weird quote, you know, at least once a show. And a you've, you've, you've had a couple. <laughs> you've had a couple this, this time around. Darkness and then you got your dark secrets. That you dark secrets. Club going up on a Tuesday and hot smoked meats. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <anyway. laughs> Um, awesome. I'm gonna let you lead this one off just because you're rocking it right now. So Thursday, yeah. the collection or the pack that everybody's <laughs> been talking about the last 48 hours, uh, Seinfeld pack, baby. It's a great one. It's a great one. Uh, Seinfeld pack, first of its kind collaboration cooked up mm-hmm. by the man himself, Freddie. Uh, very simplistic, but also has some very specific reasons behind the team selected. Uh, mm-hmm. So obviously a beauty of a crown with the Mets here with <laughs> standard Royal crown. They're all solid, uh, solid crown Seinfeld patch on all of them, flat baddies on all of them. If that can focus in. Yep. Uh, good greens on all of them, black guts. There and we go. there we go. Thank you, Ben. No problem. And these are all a hundred percent wool. Hmm. Uh, everybody's aware there and i believe they're bangladesh they are made in bangladesh hat club interior label as well i think the most important detail of course is the hat club label on the inside Uh, yes it is yes it is some other time yes uh (laughs) second uh was so when we initially concepted this so freddie cooked this up uh Mm -hmm. there were some amazing t-shirts that were done as well Hopefully those end up seeing the light of day at some point. Hopefully we're able to bring those back if this collection does really well, which I definitely think it will based off of the uh, feedback there. But originally it was only going to be a, uh, a Mets and a Yankees. And I said to the, I said to the crew, I said, Hey, you're leaving out a team. I was like, yes. They're like what? No, it's a show in New York. I was like, but there's a pretty iconic episode mm-hmm. that features a different team. And that would be, the Baltimore Orioles. So this Dude, is Elaine's O's. I would have been so pissed if we did not include the <laughs> Orioles in this collection. I mean, at one is a Seinfeld fan, but most importantly, we're a hat company. And, exactly. and the, the entire episode was based around that goddamn hat. And it's yes, it like, was. Oh my God. It this was, is yeah. a 1999 logo? Or is it, wait, was this 80s? What year that's is this? Eight, logo that's 89. Back? 89. Yeah, 89 logo uh, on the front. So this is pretty uh, pretty much identical to what Elaine was wearing, just obviously the Seinfeld patch on the side. Uh, I don't have the last one because it's a garbage franchise. <laughs> although it was, uh, very I got it in much, my hand, though. <laughs> yeah. Even though it was very much part of the show. So assistant to the traveling secretary, Ben Christensen, oh. will show this off. That is correct. Uh, here's your uh, <laughs> lovely New York Yankees and a very – very regal dark navy um really like the uh how though just the white just kind of stands out a little bit more than a usual yankee hat and just you know three-dimensional logo and everything like that mm-hmm. uh tonal flag of course on all these and as austin pointed out all these are going to have an old school green under visor black on the sweatband hat club tag on the inside i pointed the wrong side because i'm looking into a lens 
Uh, but all these are going to be dropping on Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, HackClub.com, HackClub app. And the NoHo store is going to be dropping them Thursday morning Correct. as well. All uh, three at the NoHo store. Yes, they just got them today. It is official. Because <laughs> um, apparently they're filming a movie outside of the Hack Club store, at least on that block. And so it kind of delayed uh, shipment arriving mm. for a little bit. They were supposed to oh, get them wow. today. Yeah, but they got them today. So I found out in, a, in our earlier meeting this morning about that. So I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna say something, I guess, and Cap Crusader, he may be happy about this or not. My favorite hat of the pack, ironically enough, is the one Austin is wearing. I, I love the Mets. Woo Jerry's really, Mets, really baby. Nice. I'm gonna have to disagree yeah. with both of you. It's this one. This is the number I one. love them. I love them both. <laughs> There's so many iconic Mets moments in that show. There's so with Keith Hernandez being on multiple times and dating Elaine, and uh and then you know, obviously the O's had its own moment. And then the, the, I mean, I loved it, even though I hate the Yankees, I loved the execution with George, like giving, uh, who was it? Bernie Williams and Derek Jeter, like yes. giving instructions. Mm -hmm. So like the, I mean, it was just fucking flawless. I yeah. I mean, so don't get me wrong, chat. I think the Yankees looks nice, but I feel like a wool crown. Like, I mean, I'm automatically thinking with that Mets crown, I'm definitely doing brown trench like that's that's like prime time like winter weather attire right there especially with it being wool i didn't know it was all wool i thought it was poly so they're all 100 wool, percent wool yeah, baby that's gonna, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a winter classic right there hat yeah should have done I, you know breeze better yeah <laughs> yes exactly none of that polyester crap <laughs> George said exactly that. um so I would recommend chat sizing up on these. So I am typically a seven and an eighth and, and I have two different sizes uh, mm -hmm. for each hat. Um, so the O's I took a seven and an eighth and then in the Mets, I took a seven and a quarter. So um, mm -hmm. will also tends to shrink on occasion. Oh yeah. Uh, they were in the pool. So, <laughs> so uh get another side bell reference for us there chat um but the, we uh i would recommend sizing up one size and mm -hmm. you should be good so. yeah you know if you don't if your size isn't in the store you know you might have to do a feats of strength type of yep. thing to try to take it off someone else but we don't endorse that type of behavior but you know if you and if you know you know i think that would be a perfect thing to do to <laughs> Get, get another thing I'll, uh, I'll also say about these too. So these are um, the, the brim feels a little bit different on these too. They're a little bit more flexible than normal. So mm. um, that's pretty standard with wool hats in, in the right, first place. Exactly. So, yeah. so I would definitely recommend sizing up here folks. Yes. Agreed. Um, I got a, I got a quick story I'll run through in regards to Bernie Williams. So this goes back 12 years when I was doing the uh, MLB fan cave and he came in uh, and we got to interview him. Everybody got to ask him a question and every single person that was with me asked some question about his baseball career. And the first question that came to my mind was, Hey, how was it staying at that Ramada in Cleveland that uh, George Costanza put you up? <laughs> and that dude without missing a beat was just like straight up, Worst place we've ever stayed out on the road. I could not <laughs> believe it. Dude, that man, I love that. That's pretty well. epic. That's pretty epic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Uh, got them right here. So we are jumping into Saturday. And originally, I thought these were going to be a, a dual drop between New York and the website, but apparently not. So this is going to be an online release only, guys. Um, if you still want to stop by the NoHo store, I don't blame you. It's a great store. It's a good place to pick up a hat. But these four hats in particular are only going to be dropping on the website, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. This is the NoHo Naughty Rushmore Pack. And uh, got to start off with this one in honor of Tef, uh, Atlanta Braves. <laughs> so this is a very, very royal blue that we got going on here for the crown. And most mm -hmm. notably different shade of blue for the button up top definitely more of an electric blue which of course matches in with the uh, metallic icy blue that's going on the exterior of the a logo uh 1999 world series side patch so a combination mm -hmm. of metallic icy blue and a bit of metallic silver and of course metallic copper on the outskirts there uh black of course for the upper visor tonal flag on the side 
Uh, flat stitch batting on the back, all metallics between uh, icy blue, metallic copper, and metallic silver. Mm -hmm. Hat Club original pink under visor going on here with a nice black sweatband. And all these are going to be made in China, 100% polyester. That's dope, man. It yeah. almost... Uh... It almost reminds me like a, of like a remix to the Sub Zeros that we came out with. Like, yeah, but when was that? Like December? Or yeah, something? it was. I can't even remember. Yeah, so, and but and very the, very nice. I like the uh, I like the inclusion of silver for sure. Yep, and the answer, Chad, is yes, yes. This, <laughs> is, the one. this is the one, and I will. Don't check me. Check the air quality. It's, <laughs> it's, I love that. <laughs> don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All right, number two uh texas rangers i'm gonna go with so yeah sorry just i had to verify the button up top just because we obviously the crown and button were different mm -hmm. color just had to make sure i wasn't seeing things on this one so texas rangers t logo black interior with a nice metallic copper exterior this is a mm -hmm. chrome white crown not an optic white crown but black upper visor black button uh, final seal season of Globe Life Field. So a lot of great usage of metallic copper, metallic rust, and a little bit of metallic silver as far as the uh, the triptychs on the side there. Mm -hmm. Flat stitch batting it. on the back. So black metallic copper and metallic red rust. Tonal flag on the side. And then once again, Hack Club Original Pink Under Visor, black sweatband. And this bad boy is going to be made in China as well. Very nice crown. I mean, final season patch doesn't get any better than that. Um, very well put together crown. <clears throat> I stand by my statement. Yeah, I think uh, I think again, it's a use of uh, the silver metallics for me. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. This I is, like it. Uh, yeah, I feel like on a lot of like patches and designs where you're using that metallic to pull out a lighter color, it's always gonna just hit very, very well. So really yeah. good color placement on the patch. Shout out to Nadi on these. Very, very, very tough. Uh, I do have to answer a question here quickly, Ben. Right uh, on. So Mr. Pink asked, uh, hey, Austin, do you recommend going up on the Seinfelds because of the possible shrinkage? Uh, or <laughs> is it true to size uh, to size small from the get-go? I tried on a few. More times than not, it ran small. So I would say, I would say definitely size up. Mm-hmm. I got to say, even just the usage of the word shrinkage is a sign. <laughs> very <laughs> George. It's, it's phenomenal. It's very George. And anybody who doesn't think that this is hands down one of the three greatest shows of all time is just kidding themselves. It's, they're just wrong. They're just yeah. wrong. <laughs> yeah. So right. there you go. Moving on. This is number three. So Arizona Diamondbacks got the D logo there. So metallic icy blue on the interior. Uh, this is going to be a chrome white crown. Uh, nice little use of the electric blue once again for the button up top. And this is actually a navy blue upper visor. I had to double very check nice. that. It, it's very dark, but it looks black. But I assure you it's navy blue. Yeah, I think uh, I think Arizona is going to go crazy for these. I think so as well. Uh, 1998 inaugural season for the side patch. A lot of black and metallic icy blue in the interior for that. Uh, same with the flat stitch batting on the back. So metallic silver, metallic icy blue on either side. Cool gray under visor, black on the sweatband. And of course, made in China, just like the other two. Mm -hmm. Again, love the use of metallic silver. I think uh, we're three for three there. So Yeah. Yeah. Now that front logo is, is next level. I really, really like that. Same. But. They all pale in comparison to number four, which, of course, I purposely saved the best for last. Chrome white. Mr. Oakland Richard. A's, baby. There so. we go, Ben. What? I said, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Black crown, electric blue on the button up top, uh, dark royal blue for the upper visor, and, of course, an all metallic copper A's logo on the front. Um, and then, once again, Battle of the Bay. World Series uh, 1989 side patch, all metallics, metallic copper, metallic silver, metallic icy blue. Uh, just a very beautiful usage of colors there with the metallics. So once again, as Austin pointed out, all the metallics. Uh, uh, flat stitch batting on the back, metallic copper, metallic icy blue, and a little bit of navy blue on the other interior there. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, icy 
Hack Club Original Icy Blue Under Visor, black on the sweatband, and made in China on this one. Nice. Yeah, this is my this is my number two. I like it. Fair. I like it. Hell yeah. There we yeah, go. Good use of the good use of the metallics all throughout all four hats. Yes, sir. Way to go, Naughty. Way to, <laughs> Way to go, Justin, on this one. So this four patter day, June 9th, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, only in hackclub.com and the Hack Club app. Home. There we go. Quick fingers, folks. That's all I'm gonna say. Yes. I saw you asking on stock. Quick fingers for sure. All right, so <clears throat> there was a little bit of a change to the schedule. So I've got photos for this next collection. You know what, Ben? Since we made a change too, oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little sneak peek. Mm. Give me a moment. Oh, uh oh. Okay. Do you want to do you want to hammer moment. through the the next color story real quick before you show the? Uh... Go into it. Go into All it. All right, here we go. Give me one sec, guys. Bam. Wait, what the hell is that? Oh, no. So, Bermologist is asking, this is Saturday, Bermologist. So, all the hats that he just showed um, from Noho Nadi's pack, these are going to be online only, releasing on Saturday. So, all 11 a.m. Right. Pacific Standard, 2 p.m. <clears throat> Eastern Standard Time. Weekend drop. Weekend drop. Weekend drop. And only on the website and only on the Hat Club app. So, anyway, here is the yeah. next color story. These are going to be dropping Monday, July 1st. This is a combination navy blue up a uh, crown and a woodland camo upper visor, um, and of course Ooh. there's going to be a bit of uh, usage of the of bone slash pearl for the interior for the logos, and a bit, a bit of metallic gold as far as the exterior. So this is the first one, the Arizona Diamondback script. Because I saw somebody talking the other day, we need more of these Diamondbacks cursive script hats. Well, here you go. Mm. I do like this. I like these are them. navy, by the way, folks. Yes, oh, navy blue. they were black. Yeah, they're coming oh, in. They're coming in black from these photos, but they're uh, they're definitely navy. Yeah, I gotta I gotta yell at someone else about lighting again. Um. Okay. Now, now it makes on... sense. <laughs> Flat stitch baddie on the back of all these, and of course, metallic gold on the interior uh, for the either side of the flat stitch batterman. Holy uh, black... loose thread. I know. What's up with that? <laughs> uh, black on the sweatband, gray for the under visor, and uh, all these, I believe, are made in China. Actually, they are. I, I did check the tag because I had to zoom in yeah. real close. <laughs> there it is. Made in China. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Diamondbacks, the first one. Uh, now you can see the navy blue a little bit more. So yeah. Baltimore Orioles alternate logo with the 1993 All-Star Game is number two. Mm -hmm. uh, number three is going to be Austin's own New York Yankees with the uh, <laughs> 1975 through uh, 1991 NY logo. And that is actually a flat stitch, if you can't tell. But mm -hmm. 100th anniversary of Yankee Stadium for the side patch. Uh, next up, we got Los Angeles Dodgers script. So much like the Diamondbacks, that bone kind of like pearlescent colorway in the interior with metallic gold for the exterior. 40th anniversary of Dodger Stadium. Uh, Chicago Cubs up next. So alternate sleeve patch logo from the Ryan Sandberg era. 1990 All-Star Game for the side patch. I dig it. I dig yeah. this one, actually. Yeah, yeah I really do like that. I like that. Uh, Houston Astros up next. Not really much of a difference in color because this, of course, is the right era for the mid-90s with the navy blue. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. But the state of Texas uh, spring training batting practice, practice logo for the side patch on this one. Yeah. Not too bad. No, not bad at all. Uh, next up, Oakland A's. Interesting usage of the front logo because this one is actually the 1973 A's logo, uh, but complemented with the 50th anniversary of the Oakland A's organization. So there's or of the organization in Oakland specifically. And of mm -hmm. course, it's got the Tribune Tower there in the background. Or as uh, Austin likes to call it, Big Ben. Yeah, the Big Ben. <laughs> this one I dig, mm. Seattle Mariners Block S, uh, 30th anniversary for the side patch. I do like this. I like the I like the use of the yellow and the drop shadow on that, and then the hits off the 30th. This is nice. This is probably my number two behind the um, the Cubs. Cubs is still my favorite right now. Okay. 
us man we just dropped an angels like a week or two ago with yeah uh, we did the inevitable pack mm-hmm. yeah we did. we did just sleep on it suit up angels s man was in a coma <laughs> uh there is a san francisco giants in this collection 1980s logo with the uh, 50th anniversary side patch oddly enough this is the only one where the entire front logo is metallic gold yeah and this might be my favorite out of them really mm-hmm. oh just wait till you see the last one mm. okay and last but not least the one i know is going to sell out the fastest uh the pbj mask with of course Ooh. the uh, pbj butter knives for the side patch Mm. wow that is I, nice yeah, yeah that, that is, is i nice. would almost say this is like a peanut butter <laughs> peanut butter and honey yep maybe there we know, go the pbh mm-hmm. yeah the pbh i this, like that. that yeah this is definitely crept, crept in my, to my top three i think it's something about the contrast on that cubs logo that still has it in the top spot for me um, i can dig that but i yeah, think cubs is my number two yeah i feel like it's the only thing, and I think most people who like Cubs hats have said the same thing. I do like that the 1990 patch is a really good go-to, but I'd like to see other patches used. I know that the patch repository maybe for the Cubs isn't that large, but I feel like here, like the Wrigley Ivy patch that we used on the Horror Pack, that would have been interesting. I, I would have liked to see that here. But I, I can dig I'm that one, it. actually. I do like that patch a lot. Yeah, I could have seen it there, but the 1990 isn't bad. I do like it. I would say this is probably in my number two slot because mm-hmm. you don't see that very often. And I put the Seattle at my number three. Yeah. And a reminder, folks, this is a color story. So plenty of stock there. Yes. Uh, I mm-hmm. believe these are going to stores as well. Um, yes, they are. So no pan- no need to panic on these ones. You should be able to cop with these. Um. So somebody was asking if this is going to be an app exclusive. Uh, I don't think it is. I think it's just nope. dropping with the other one. So you guys are in good yeah, shape on that one. I think it's going to NoHo, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the other one that we were supposed to show off, uh, that got pushed back by a week, I actually got to pick up Ooh, because I was uh, out in Arizona recently, uh, and it's a color story, but it's a damn good one. So, Ooh. I know that we said, a f- What's sorry, that? so the color story I just showed off the Navy Woodland Camo, Monday, Monday, July 1st, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, hackclub.com, Hack Club app, there you go. Perfect. Yep. So another one that we have coming up is a very nice solid. Mm, the black, ooh. So all black crown. Uh, everything. I know Teff's a big pewter guy. So I am. all the front logos are like pewter and one other color. Uh, I picked up the Baltimore uh, for obvious reasons. I've worn the shit out of this already. It's already got like <laughs> a pretty crusty upper visor to it. Uh, and then the team side patches are um, all colored as well. So mm. it's almost like a, a flip on like the uh, City Sleeps uh, colorway that we did a couple yeah, months that. ago. But yeah, pewter front logos, gray unders, black udders. This is a color story coming in just a couple weeks. So you won't wait long. And these, I believe, are also made in China. Yes, made that, in China. No, that can, yeah, that, that front logo. I really want to see more of that front script B. For mm-hmm. Baltimore Memorial hats being used, mm-hmm. that's that's very clean. Ain't a damn thing wrong with them at yeah, all. You know, you know what's funny? What's up, bud? You you have that Baltimore one in your hand, but I look behind me and I've got the entire clip sitting on the floor behind me. Whoa! Mm-hmm. All right, Ben, show off your your next favorite one, and that's all, right. all that that's all that chat's getting. <laughs> no worries, I'll do that. So yeah, these are gonna have to be saved for uh, for the next week, just because we we flip the uh, the scheduling with those. But they'd already sent them out. Oh my god. <laughs> um. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna show this one off just because it's a team that we haven't dropped like a ton of hats for this year. Um, okay. But I know Marin Ludwig that's... would be a, a huge <laughs> fan of this. So Kansas wow. City Royals. Yes. Is that the what logo is that? Is that the City Connect logo? That is the City Connect. So much, yeah. Mm. Actually, the one thing I will say is pretty much all of these in this collection are the City Connect logos. Uh huh. It's yeah, very, that, it's a very different take. I really like that crown. Like the fact that that crown is actually moving and glistening as you move that hat in the light. Yes, that's that's actually really hard. That's tough. No, I I dig these. Um, it took it took me a sec. Is it like? 
the fact you brought up the city connect it's like you know what actually pretty much every single one of these is a city connect logo yeah yeah mm. there was a logo on there that i didn't realize was city connect when i saw it in person uh i, I already was, know which one it is yeah <laughs> <laughs> because that was the uh, one where i stopped as i was looking through and i had to like process it for a second i'm like yeah oh, yeah that's right yeah it's a very good color story very. indeed uh shelby asked austin what do you use to curve your brims just the old hands just the old hands baby hands a little bit of grease okay. elbow grease that use the head the hands give it a good little curve this way you know i'm old school listen, <laughs> i don't have a steamer listen he said god didn't make a steamer he made an awesome <laughs> that's, yes. that's all you need to know that's all you need to know uh mr vickery Oddly enough, you asking about Skull Chiefs and stuff like that, that actually came up during our meeting this morning. Mm. Um, but I also saw Wilder tap in and say some very good words that, you know, perhaps in the not-too-distant future. Ooh, <laughs> let's go. On a hat club um, app not too far away. You know? <laughs> yeah. All right. Got- line said, like, a goddamn American. <laughs> <laughs> we got one That's exactly time. how I read it, too. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We got one more collection to show off, and these are going to be dropping on Tuesday, July 2nd, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, and uh, they are going to be uh, dropping in stores as well. Um, I saw a couple of people mention in the comments already. This is going to be the Garden of Eden pack. Um, I am starting in no particular order on this, so first one in hand is your Detroit Tigers. <laughs> So, forest green crown, button, and upper visor. Uh, 2005 All-Star game for the side patch. But um, <clears throat> very nice detail work as far as the front logo here, and especially being a three-dimensional pattern. That's probably one of the best Detroit front logos I think I've ever seen. I agree with that. I had to like kind of like sit and process this one for a bit because I couldn't figure out what was different about it, but it's literally just because this is a three-dimensional logo and typically it's a flat stitch logo. Mm. Yeah, I already know Mark's got his eyes on that. Oh yeah. Yep. It's a good looking crown. Whole packs. Mm-hmm. The whole pack's awesome. Oh, Shout yeah. out to Freddie on this one. This is one that Freddie cooked up a very, very long time ago. Glad it finally came to fruition. Um <laughs> Ben's gonna weirdly show off the sweat man. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's a it's a pack full of just absolute heat. Do these yeah, have the hat club label? No, right? They do not. I no. I thought they would, but they do not. Uh, all of them are gonna be hundred uh, percent polyester made in China. But yeah, cool gray under visor, black sweat band on this one. Detroit Perfect Tiger. hat to wear to the Masters. It's a good call, actually. All right, next up. St. Louis Cardinals alternate logo. So the single bat on the bird. Yes, that Mm -hmm. is metallic red rust on the interior. Yes, that is metallic copper on the exterior. Uh, Navy blue crown, forest green button and upper visor. And uh, 30th anniversary of Bush Stadium, which once again is a patch that we have not used in. I don't think ever, actually. No, we used it in the sangria pack. Yeah. Oh, dude. I've been. I'm trying to get like you, Ben. I'm trying to get my <laughs> trivia knowledge out. I did, man, I can't believe I spaced on that one. My this God. One, this one's awesome in hand, too. I uh, yeah. I came this close to buying it when I was in the uh, uh, in the warehouse. Never can go wrong with the navy and green two-tone. But I think that logo, that front logo to me is what does it for that crown. Yeah, yeah. the front logo looks amazing in person. Mm-hmm. Can attest. Yes. I love this. Mm-hmm. That one's definitely my number one spot. Um, next up, Oakland A's, black and forest green two tone with a nice metallic graphite A's logo on the front, as well as 50th anniversary for the side patch. Yeah, this one's second hand too. I do like this. It's kind of giving me carbon carbon pack vibes. Yeah, but I, mm-hmm. I think that like that transition between that front logo A's is kind of the same effect that I think Naughty used on his. A's, I kind of see here as well. That was really clean. Black sweaty, cool gray under visor, money. These are all made in China, right, Ben? They are made, yes, all of them are made in China. Okay. 
Uh, next up, Arizona Diamondbacks. So a little bit bigger of a D logo. So kind of like we just did recently with the um, barbershop pack. But yep. this is going to be a off-white interior for the D logo. And that is metallic green, metallic Kelly green for the scales, as well as metallic copper on the outskirt. <laughs> Two thousand one. So the, uh, the story behind this one, chat. Uh, if you know your biblical stories, yep. uh, the snake representing the devil, uh, and then red for uh, the apple on top. Yep. Mm. From the tree. Very very interesting. Like interesting how you use the colors on the hat to do the storytelling. I wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have thought that. From the top, actually, the side patch. Can I see the side patch again, Ben? Absolutely. Side patch kind of could could see that being an apple. Maybe well, just like wait, Taff. You just wait, Taff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I was gonna save this one for last, but now I can't because we're in discussion point of this right now. But there is another another navy green two tone in this. Um, I thought it was the Yankees at first, but it's not. It's actually the Mets. And speaking of apples, Ooh. you thought it was the Yankees. Well, no, because we've done so many of the Apple Yankee hats in the past that I forgot that we actually have a Mets on, on file as well. And that the so. Mets actually raise up an apple, like a true baseball team in New yeah, York. Yeah, whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, it doesn't happen often because the Mets don't hit home runs often. But that yeah. is true. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, 40th anniversary of the Mets organization on the side patch, 1962 to 2002. You're I gonna make me, y'all are gonna make me say nice things about two Mets hats in one stream. I know, right? <laughs> that's, that's crazy. But no, this is for like the storytelling and what's going on for this pack. I really do like the fact that we went with that logo. Yeah, I know Cap Crusader doesn't like it, but I, I think this is a very well executed hat. Ties to the thematic perfectly. Oh, just Jay saying the Mets hit four home runs off Garrett Cole tonight, so there you go. Whoa, I hey. didn't even know that. Hell yeah. Spoiler alert, I didn't check the box score yet, but hey. I bet <laughs> the Mets still lost, managed to lose that game. Oh, uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up is going to be Chicago Cubs, so alternate sleeve patch logo from the Ryan Sandberg era once again. Black crown, upper visor, and button. So a nice usage of uh, metallic Kelly green and metallic... Uh, I'm going to go, I'll say graphite on this one. Yeah. Uh, and then the Wrigley Ooh. Field patch from the side. That patch is sick. Love that. I do like that. Now is the bo bottom of this is gray, Ben? The bottom of this is going to be uh, retro green. Hell yeah. <sighs> Chat, y'all may be mad at me for this, but I'm going to, I'm going to throw this out there. I feel like because of the, is that like light blue on the Chicago, Illinois, and that side patch? Yep. You know it. I would have liked to see this be an icy. Mm. I'm not. I'm not, mad, I'm not mad at the darker green. Yeah, but I would have liked to have seen this one being icy, just because of the detail in the side patch. I think that would have been interesting. Nice. Wow and the then, uh, the Mets are up six to one. There we go. Damn. And then last but not least, uh, four screen crown button upper visor. Baltimore Orioles alternate logo, O Apache VS, white interior, metallic copper exterior, uh, 30th anniversary of Oriole <laughs> Park at Camden Yards, all metallics as well. Love the brick detail work in that. Good job, Fred. Now, I, I don't know why. I want to ask Freddie why he didn't use a bird logo on this one. Yeah. Kind of kind of kind of strange. Yeah. So I think it's yeah. an awesome hat. I love it. Uh I'm just curious. So more than anything. And, and yes, the only one in the collection with a Hat Club original pink undervisor. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. I like this. I, I like this crown. I think I agree with Wilder. This is the one of the pack. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's this one. Then you got the Tigers and then whoever you want to put in the in the third slot, the Cubs or St. Louis, St. Louis. Or yeah, yeah no, I, actually, yeah, that would be the right order. Um, this one, Tigers, St. Louis. That would be my three. I like that. I uh I'm going St. Louis, then A's. Mm. Okay. The Adams oh. A's. Go back on that one. So St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Then we got the A's. What's your number three? Baltimore. It's a toss-up between the O's and uh the Tigers. Yeah. 
yeah, man, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, that tiger logo is very, very well done. One, oh, yeah. one may say even forty-seven <laughs> embroidery level right there. <laughs> Borderline forty-seven embroidery level. Hey, with that new acquisition, hopefully that uh, means some some good embroideries along the way. So we, we either definitely. we want to see the whiskers on the tiger or nothing at all. That's 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 the standard now. It's going to be the standard. <laughs> So all these are going to be dropping. This is the Garden Eden of Garden of Eden pack once again. Tuesday, July 2nd, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, hackclub.com. Yep. Hackclub Hack app is where he was going after mm -hmm. that one. We got you back now, Ben. You froze, you Ben. Oh, yep. Shit. Yeah. So I'll say it again. Oh, Tuesday, Bob with Tuesday mm -hmm. July 2nd, Garden of Eden pack. Hackclub.com, Hackclub app, as well as at every Hack Club location. There you go. Yeah. And um, Bob Conda asking you, Austin, about what acquisition do you want to fill chat out? Oh, with? yes. Yeah. It's pretty public knowledge. Uh, New Era is set to acquire 47 brand. Mm. So my two former employees will now become one former employee. So, <laughs> uh, so, but from our understanding is not much are going to change. You're just going to operate as separate, separate entities. Um, I think it was more than likely a defensive move from, uh, fanatics acquiring more and more licenses and their ability to manufacture headwear. Um, so I think that's kind of like the, the reason behind it. Also the D'Angelo brothers are, uh, nearing retirement age. So they're probably wanting to, uh, just enjoy their uh their fortune uh so who are the owners of uh 47 brand mm -hmm. um so but yeah should be a, a positive and a big win for the uh for the hat industry in my opinion so yeah that's a good call agreed yeah yeah so i just noticed this ben you're wearing an oakland spell out and i'm wearing the athletic script and we're hey, both there we go the screen and that wasn't planned chat that this was not planned at all no but me wearing this hat today was planned because Peyton mm -hmm. Spen, you asked the question and uh, I I did it on purpose. So this is, of course, the Oakland script in navy, yellow, gold, and orange with the Ricky Henderson patch. This is dropping this Friday, like ass early in the morning. We'll say like 7 a.m. West Coast time. But it's also dropping at the Great Mall store. So come by. I'll be there that day if you want to see it. Hell yeah. And buy it. Yeah. Listen. We believe that will be a great hat. Hey, <laughs> I love it. That's all we got, folks. That yeah, is man. all we got. Uh, <laughs> That's all we got this week. Yeah, and um, looking at IG chat, there's been a lot of talk about um, make more a frames. Um, you won't have to wait long. You won't have to wait long. Correct. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Definitely see you guys with all these uh, make more a frames comments. Um, we have more a frames coming in that uh, uh, I got my hands on uh, when I was at the warehouse and very interesting. Like some of them are like, uh, like foam padded uh, front, uh, front panels. Um, wait, very like old school, like gas station trucker hats not that not that level of foam okay. uh it's still it still has a poly exterior uh but it's like stitch onto foam it was very it's very interesting very cool at the same time um nice. but like it was a noticeable difference uh so when when we see those coming i think it's in like the next week or so ben froze with a very funny face yes uh, he did. <laughs> but oh. um when it comes in like the next i think next week or so we'll have ben post some pictures on twitter of it um because it is it's really cool to check out i would cop one and give it a shot and i tried it on didn't feel any different than the regular it's just mm -hmm. uh like you could push on it and it felt foamy so oh, interesting no. yeah. and uh shouts out to chronicles of q if you're looking for the a-frame king it is him so uh Direct all <laughs> A-frame questions to Chronicles of Q. Man, As you guys remember a year and a half ago when we really started pushing out A-frame hats, and most notably before anybody else did, and how mm. angry a lot of people were, and then all of a sudden here we are because Hack Club is all about starting and ushering in trends. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, all you haters can suck it on that one. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> ben, I think I've been the person the loudest the past three years about that uh, is true. About getting more A-frames in. So. No, definitely, definitely Austin is, if there was like a person who was like an embodiment of a spokesperson for A-frames, <laughs> I see Austin's face every time. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the numbers back it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. He's not just pushing this because I think I think a lot of people would shit themselves if they knew the percentage of uh, overall hat club sales that are a frames. Uh, I think there would be a lot of fitted collectors out there that would literally shit their shorts because they would not believe the number. So, no, I've I've yet to I've yet to jump into the the a frame world, but I'm definitely gonna have to pretty soon. Comfortable as hell, man. Comfortable as hell. They're like my daily wares. Uh, We haven't put like a ton of like, we haven't interjected them into a lot of like collections, which we did with Sweethearts, but Sweethearts was uh, uh, not exactly my, uh, my vibe with, uh, with velvet. Uh, I don't look great in a uh, velvet hat. Shocker. Uh, (laughs) But (laughs) like, it's so like, I think, uh, I think we're going to start interjecting them into more and more collections and it'll be good for, uh, for all those A-frame lovers out there and people asking about them, it's not going to dominate the space, I don't think. But you know, it's it's definitely rising for sure. Yeah, I own two A-frame hats. Neither one of them is a. Ha- oh, actually, one of them te- is a Hat Club hat. Sorry, one of them is not. Um, <laughs> I got it's the LSU one. I completely forgot about that because the, yep. the forty-seven brand event we did last year. But the other one. Yeah, you're probably not going to see me wear on screen ever. Uh, <laughs> no, no, and no. You have another one. You have your NBA one. Mm-hmm. That was that was the second one I was. Re- that's right. That was the second one I was referring to as the NBA and NBC one. Okay. Yeah. And- I wish we did that one, but it's like uh, I had to buy it just because I'm such a huge basketball whore. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But um. Yeah. But yeah, I mean um. But for IG that's asking like, hey, we. We missed the you know showing of Nadi's collection. If you do miss anything that we showed during the show, um, definitely go to the Twitch page and you can scrub. You do not have to watch it linearly. You can actually scrub. Do we put like time marks as to where we start talking about certain collections, or we not don't do necessarily? That? But I mean, you can just fast forward far enough. So I would say yeah. it's probably around yeah. the fifty-five minute mark. Ah, eh, no, maybe a little bit later <laughs> than that. But and know, everything that. gets uploaded to YouTube uh, as well. So. Um, the YouTube Mm -hmm. upload just takes a while. So if you want to watch immediately, go to Twitch. If you want to wait until tomorrow to check them out, just go to the YouTube channel. So exactly. Another thing I want to point out, if you ever want to see how quickly a frame hat sells, hang out with me in the store one day, fuck hammer through them. Every store manager is, is like harassing us to get more and more a frames every single day. So gen pop. The Gen Pop loves A frames. <laughs> Look at a furry with just Johns. Yeah, just I'm gonna. Chat. And he just one, got, and he just popped in the chat. There we go. He did. Hey! That's why I was doing it. I was I was doing it purposely to to mess oh. with him. G Laurent. Oh no, there's there's Arizona exclusives at the store this weekend. Uh, I'm just letting the the Arizona uh, the Hack Club A A Z or sorry Hack Club P H X is the mm-hmm. Instagram account to follow because that's correct, right, Austin? Yes. Yes. That is the account that will show off all the in-store exclusives that are dropping this Saturday. Um, just like Hack Club Great Mall. I don't think we have any exclusives dropping there this weekend. The Southern California stores have store exclusives dropping this weekend. So yeah, follow, follow those accounts. Everything's just kind of consolidated into one now. Yeah. And then uh, Elk Dot mentioned something in chat. I won't mention it yet because it hasn't been announced yet, but uh, that is something that's coming in the fairly near future. Well, now I got to go Couple back weeks. in time and read. <laughs> Couple weeks. Yep. It's yeah. I think oh. one episode, guys. Like, if I can get in my screen, if I could get like four, like hats stacked, then we should get a random person to get an invoice. <laughs> if I can get four to like balance and not look weird, then 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 that person. Just four? I feel like four is very achievable. And four gotta... could be achievable. I could get five. Then? You think five? It would, but it have to make sense. Like you'd have to be able to see that I actually had five stacked, though. <laughs> right. said, no hat, Jenga. Yeah. <laughs> make it eight, Augie. Now you're just being ridiculous. Who would wear <laughs> a stack of eight hats? 
I accept your challenge, but who would reasonably wear a stack of eight hats? <laughs> it's, it's craziness. Hat it's Jenga. Love it. Hat Jenga is probably a real thing. Trent, yeah, listen, Leominus, you why wear one hat when you can wear eight? Yeah. And then as you get bored throughout the day, just take one and throw it to somebody and then they can keep it. <clears throat> all right, folks. Uh, quick recap on all things that we talked about today. Uh, so Thursday, Seinfeld. Yes. Size up. It's a wool hat. It's probably going to shrink. Uh, so size mm -hmm. up one size. I wear an eighth usually. This is a quarter and it fits very nicely. Um <laughs> Saturday, we have Naughty's drop. So yep. that beautiful pack that Ben's got in his hands there, four pack. Uh, quick fingers on those. Um, Monday, color story, uh, Woodland Camo, Navy Two-Tone. Yes, sir. Uh, and then did we show something else off? Uh, we show Garden of Eden. Garden of well. Eden next Tuesday. Uh, beauty of a pack cooked up by the man, Freddie Mancebo. Uh, love the, love the designs of all these great pack go cop. Yes. And then we'll be back on Wednesday next week. Right, Ben? We're not. Doing uh, Tuesday yes, we next will. Week. Yeah. We'll be back on Wednesday. We'll uh, be back on Wednesday next week. Yeah. And apparently, uh, Chronicles of, Chronicles of Q is challenge. He's, he said he's got $20 that I can stack 10. So, um, oh shit. Okay. That's your that's your homework assignment for next Wednesday, apparently. Yeah. That's if if I can stack 10, it's gonna be a movie. And Q's good for it too. Yeah, Q's I know. Wayne Bruce, exactly. I know exact yes, he's perfect for it. Uh B007 Dwight. Yeah, shoot me a DM on my Instagram account, which is also Shaka Brody. And I will yeah, because you're the only person to ask, though, at least that I've seen. Oh no, Cap Crusader did as well. So Cap Crusader. <laughs> B007 Dwight, you're the first two to hit me up in regard to invoices for the Naughty Pack this Saturday. Yes, I will hook you guys up. Wow, you're feeling to. very generous, Ben. I did it last week too. If you don't, you know, as the old saying goes, if you don't ask, you ain't getting shit. Yep. <laughs> ask not, receive not, no cap. <laughs> That was true. Um, and then Deke49, answer your question in regard to, is the Panna Cotta ever coming back? No. Uh, no, definitely it is, it is not. So ever. Um, one other thing, too, before we log off here. Uh, so for TikTok, if you go to the TikTok page, mm -hmm. we did, we're doing a contest for early access to Seinfeld pack. So uh, all you have to do is comment your favorite Seinfeld episode on the TikTok, uh, and then you have the chance of getting early access to Seinfeld. So that's right. And if your answer is not the letter, then may God have mercy on your soul. I don't know, man. <laughs> there's just, I think that I, my personal opinion is I think there's too many to even pick a favorite. I, I got to yeah. agree with that. Uh, what's the one where they, uh, where they go return the cans in another state. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> that one's one of my favorites of all time. I feel like that yeah. one. The Festivus episode, definitely yeah. the episode when uh George was the hand model. That that's yeah. I episode. mean when uh and then when uh George uh is working for his dad selling computers with Lloyd Braun in the <laughs> yeah. garage, like that's one of my favorites too. Yep, and then you so. got the and then who else? And then what other oh yeah, the episode with um what was it? Um Master of My Domain. That was another yep. good one. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, the episode where ever George thought everybody was giving him the finger. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. A great show. Go binge some episodes before it drops. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, as always, guys, absolute pleasure hanging out with you. And then everybody in the chat. Love you guys. Love you guys showing up as always. Um, yeah. Look for. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. This is the other yeah. reason why we're jumping. Why we did the show today instead of tomorrow. Uh, NBA draft is tomorrow. So like we did with the NFL draft, I'm going to be doing a live. Uh, I've got a six pack of Mickey's grenades. Uh, <laughs> it should be interesting. I love the NBA draft and I got a shit ton of basketball jerseys. I'll be switching them out with each pick. Uh, anybody who feels like joining, please do. Uh, that's going to mm -hmm. be uh, after flip the script tomorrow, which we are going to do. Awesome mm -hmm. to me. Uh, we're going to do a replay of the uh, NBA finals between the Dallas Mavericks and the uh, Boston Celtics. 
And then, of course, Stanley Cup Game Seven, Florida Panthers versus uh, Edmonton Oilers. So should be good. That would be that would be great. And also, IG is asking for chances at invoices too, Ben. So would you suggest they tap into recap tomorrow? Maybe they one of them might get lucky. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. So Look, IG. G Laurent, shoot me a shoot me a DM, brother. I got you. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm I'm trying to keep Very it important. as like a you know maybe like three or four people. I, I'm, try, I'm trying not to like go ham on it or anything like that. <laughs> I want to be as generous as possible to everybody. So absolutely. All right. And for the people, if anything. For the people. Elk dot. I've hooked you up so many times, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but just let me let me know what you want. And I'll let me know what you want. And I'll figure it out. All right. We don't have all night here to uh, just. Uh, have people hammer Ben for invoices. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to you guys soon. It was great seeing yeah. everybody. Uh, appreciate yes, uh, everybody hanging out for a couple hours with us. Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys, man. Take care, guys.